unsupervised event-based video reconstruction. The method we present receives two inputs. First, there is a low frame rate, long exposure RGB video, usually with fast motion, which leads to strong motion blur. Note that this input contains short dark intervals, which you might notice as flickering. These are due to the shutter of the recording camera remaining closed for significant amounts of time. The frame rate of this input is about 5 frames per second. Second, our method takes a stream of event tuples, which indicate when and where the brightness of individual pixels is changing. The temporal resolution of this data can be far higher than that of the RGB recording. By using both these inputs, our method is able to reconstruct an approximation of the physical brightness signal that they originate from. The result can be a sharp, very high frame rate version of the RGB input. Please note that this video file has a limited frame rate, while the actual output from our method can have frame rates as high as 500 Hz. Previous approaches to the task of event-based video reconstruction include both pre-trained methods and untrained ones. The former require training on sufficiently large datasets that can be cumbersome to capture and might bias the method towards the training distribution. The latter do not have these disadvantages, but their performance strongly depends on their handcrafted designs, which must account for the inevitable noise in the event data. Our method is untrained, avoiding the need for training data and thus any training bias, and it includes a novel way of dealing with noise in the events. Our method works as follows. For every frame, we know the time at which the camera shutter opened and closed, delimiting the exposure period of the frame. Due to the way the camera works, there are non-negligible gap times between exposures. We model the brightness signal of one pixel. From all the frames in the sequence, we can estimate an average brightness B bar for our pixel that, when multiplied with the signal duration, tells us the size of the area under a hypothetical brightness curve. We depict one such area in orange, but since B bar is only an initial estimate for its size, and because it determines only the size and not the shape of the area, we of course need further constraints. First we constrain the discontinuities of the orange shape to lie at the event times the camera has reported for our pixel. Second, due to the physical model we assume for event generation, we know that the brightness value at an event is likely to deviate by a certain threshold factor from the brightness value at the previous event. Since event cameras tend to report spurious events, we assign each event a confidence weight between 0 and 1, depicted here as the saturation of the points, modulating the threshold factor per event. This modulation is of course bounded and regularized. We observe that for subtle brightness changes in well-lit areas, the camera may often not report any event at all. To mitigate the reconstruction error introduced by this, and to prevent drift, we introduce so-called exposure-based control points centered in the exposure gaps. The event model tells us that they can only lie in a certain corridor between the closest events. In between all the control points, we can now interpolate a hypothetical brightness signal. The black curve you see is not a Bezier curve, but the derivative of one. We defined it using the y-coordinates of the control points as slopes. The Bezier curve itself is monotonically increasing and not depicted here. It represents the integral under the brightness curve and models the total amount of energy received by the pixel up to a certain point in sequence time. Based on this construction, we can efficiently and accurately compute the energy accumulated during exposure periods for which the brightness frames provide ground truth. Optimizing our exposure loss, together with our confidence and linearity regularizers, brings our model into agreement with the frames. We now have a look at some more results. First, comparing our method to a number of previous works shows that we reduce motion blur most effectively while avoiding the creation of spatial or temporal noise. On synthetic data, for which we have pseudo ground truth, we can even provide error maps to confirm the superior quality of our outputs. Numeric evaluation shows a significant improvement by our method over the competition. By dropping every second input frame of a recording, and using the dropped frames as low frame rate reference data, 
we can provide the same error maps even for real sequences. Here too, our method, without any pre-training, is competitive with previous work. In this ablation example, which we explain in detail in our manuscript, we emphasize the strong temporal noise you can observe in the third column from the right, proving the usefulness of our exposure-based control points. In these ablation examples, you can observe that turning off our confidence weights, fourth column from the right, or any of our regularizers, see the two rightmost columns, significantly deteriorates output quality. The same holds true for alternative interpolation methods, which we show in the third and fourth column from the left. Thank you.